Hi, I'm Michelle Caffrey, author of Bring Jade Home, the true story of a young Australian shepherd who was lost in Yellowstone National Park for 44 days. When her owner is seriously injured in a car accident while vacationing, 15-month-old Australian shepherd Jade bolts into the two million acre wilderness and disappears. The young dog faces the threats of starvation, predators, and the hostile landscape of Yellowstone National Park. I'm going to read to you one of my favorite passages. This is when David, who is Jade's owner, is injured, his girlfriend, Laura, and David's daughter, Angie, come back to Yellowstone National Park to find Jade. Jade's been sighted, um, but she's elusive, and they're still trying to find her. Uh, they've been reported to be in a, she, Jade, has been reported to be in a certain area. Laura pulled in front of the chained entrance to the service road. A park vehicle squeezed in next to them, and an armed ranger jumped from it. Through the open window, he said, we'll be behind you. We'll leave some space so we don't scare your dog away. He eyed the interior of the car where a loaded platter of bacon and cheese sat next to Angie. That's David's daughter. I suppose you're trying to lure her with that. He scanned the area. Careful, you might get a bear interested too. And you have it next to me, Angie muttered. Laura promised to be cautious as she drove through the gate. The ranger followed then locked it with a sturdy chain. Dense trees and four-foot berms flanked the exit. The road was a swath cut through thick brush and woods. An unexpected sense of claustrophobia gripped Laura. They were locked in, trapped. She knew she needed to shake it off, but she admitted to herself she was scared. They rode for a half an hour, continuing to call for Jade. Stop for a second. What's that? David pointed to a post with a sheet fixed, affixed to it. Before anyone answered, he opened the car door and climbed out. Only one way to see. I really don't think you should get out, Laura called after him. I don't like this. Angie sat wide-eyed, her head turning left and right. Laura silently agreed with her. She inhaled the strong aroma of sharp cheddar and bacon. Perhaps they should roll up the windows? David limped back to the car. We must be near the carcass dump. There's a list of bison killed over the summer. The last one was hit by a car a week ago. I wonder how long it takes to strip it to the bone. Gross. Angie made a gagging noise. Let's go, Laura. After making a U-turn at the chained western entrance, they spotted the ranger vehicle driving toward them in the opposite direction. See, they were right behind us. David waved at them. Only about a half a mile or so. Only, Angie grumbled. Well, at least we didn't see Jade around here. Laura shuddered at the thought of blood-smeared predators lurking in the forest, feeding on carcasses. They bounced along the road for a few minutes, and then David called out, Stop the car! There was movement in a dense underbrush. Something in variegated hues moved through the trees. It was definitely an animal. It might be her. David stepped out of the car. Jade! Here, girl, the face that emerged was dark <laughs> and without a trace of white on it. Then the rest of the grizzly appeared. It looked to be as colossal as the one they'd seen the day before. Get back in the car! Laura's heart thumped as she rolled up the windows. The bear charged toward them with a loud grunt. Cursing aloud, David scrambled back in the vehicle as fast as his injuries allowed. Hurry up! Laura watched the bear approaching. David slammed the car door. Angie screamed and Laura stomped on the accelerator. The grizzly wasn't giving up chase. Through the plume of dust behind the car, Laura could make out the bear nearing the bumper. With gritted teeth, she drove over ruts that launched the SUV into the air. A stab of pain shot through her bruised ribs as the seatbelt dug in. David grunted and Layla's metal carrier rattled with each bone-shattering bounce. Swerving around the potholes, her car tore through the underbrush while pine boughs scraped the roof. Where were the rangers? Her eyes focused on the rearview mirror. She couldn't see anything but the bear running behind them. 
Laura prayed she wouldn't get a flat tire as the accelerator inched toward 40 miles an hour. The lock gate couldn't be far ahead. Hadn't she seen a YouTube video of a bear breaking into a car by smashing the window? The gate was chained. There was no way to go off road. She might have to drive through it. She doubted it was even possible, but it appeared to be the only alternative. Then she checked her rearview mirror. The bear had disappeared. She slowed the SUV and found herself shaking with adrenaline. Angie and David let go of their hand grips. No one spoke for several minutes. Finally, David broke the silence. That was one pissed off black bear. Laura corrected him. That was a grizzly. No, it wasn't. It was a black bear. Angie rubbed her temples. A uh, black bear. A few minutes later, the rangers pulled in behind them. Any luck? Not a sign of Jade, just a bear. Not surprising. We detoured to check the carcass. It was stripped clean. He unlocked the chain and waved them through. Laura, <laughs> David turned to Laura. I wonder if the bear was late to the party to get anything. She took a deep breath. Let's hope Jade won't try for her share. Thanks.